we're going to explore the Safari app on the iPad and we're going to start at the top with the toolbar and work our way from left to right. So you notice on the far left you have the ability to either go back a page or forward a page and that's pretty standard across any browser. You can download the Chrome browser on your iPad but you cannot download Mozilla Firefox. So if you are a Firefox user uh, or you're, you want your students to use that, they'll either have to use Safari or Chrome. Beside the move back or move forward, you do have your bookmarks, and your bookmarks will start with your favorites. So any favorites that the students add will show up under their favorites, and these will be direct links to whatever that site may be. Below that, you'll find history, and within the history, if you need to clear something, you can go all the way to the bottom, and it will clear. So if I clear right now, I can clear the last hour, today, today, and yesterday are all time. So I will clear all time, and you'll see that my history is deleted. It is a good practice to every once in a while go in and clear that because some websites will hold data, and it can slow browsing if it's uh, being used a lot. The next one going across is my reading list. Now, I have several examples listed for you here that I just pulled from various different locations. And the reading list is set up so that if you want to go back to a site or the student wants to go back to a site, they can simply add this to their reading list and jump straight into that article. And they don't have to have the full site. They don't have to go to the site first. They can go straight to this source. The last one are shared links that are connected to social media. So you'll notice right now that I have several different things showing up through my Twitter account that have links in them. So instead of having to go, say, to Twitter and then open the link in Twitter, it will automatically connect to Safari. Now, the students will not probably be using any of their social media in this way, but if they do have something that is connected in that form, it will show up here, and they can go directly to it in Safari. The next is your URL bar, and this works in a standard way that any other one would. One thing I would like to point out, though, is when you tap the URL bar, your favorites that you have in your bookmarks will show up, and you can choose any of those as needed. The other thing is, if you start to type something in and it shows up in your history, it will also show up as you type it in, so that it kind of searches through your history to see if you've been there before, and then you can select from there. The other thing that's on your URL bar will be your refresh button. So. Let's say that I'm on WCPSMD, and I go to this site for the first time, but I want to refresh. Notice my refresh option shows up there. Beside the URL bar is your share sheet. The first thing you'll notice is that you can send an airdrop. So I could airdrop this URL to another device that has airdrop available. I could send it through one of the apps that's available. So I could email it. I could put it in my notes. If I'm taking notes, I could save the PDF to iBooks. And if you choose more, or the students choose more, it will show you the other apps that you can turn on that will interact with Safari. Below that are your actions. So you'll notice the star I can add to my favorites, the book I can add a bookmark, the glasses I can add to the reading list, and a really nice feature on the iPad is I can add it to my home screen. So let's say that I have the students go to a particular site and we're going to use it on a regular basis. If they add the URL to their home screen, it will show up at and almost look like an app, but it's actually a web clip. So if I add WCPSMD to my home screen, I will, it will ask me what I want it to be called. So I'm just going to leave it this. I'm going to choose Add. And now on my home screen, right beside Admin View on my home screen, I have Washington County Public Schools. When I open that, it actually opens Safari and takes me directly to the link. So it doesn't create an app, it just creates a web clip so that I can go to that straight away and I don't have to go into Safari first. The other thing that I can do is copy from there, I can print, I can find on the page so I can kind of search the page or request the desktop site. There may be some other things that you are able to do based on what's around you or what you have on your iPad. Notice I can Nearpodize this. So if I'm running Nearpod and I want this to be a part of my Nearpod presentation, I can actually transform it and it will build it in very nicely. Beside that is the plus. So I can add a new tab to my Safari browser. If I do this, this will simply add a new tab. And if I want to close that tab, I choose the X beside um, what the title of that is. The next one is actually called Tab View. So let's say that I had five tabs open on my iPad in Safari, and I wanted to see them individually and choose one of them. I could do it from here. The other thing I can do is search on the left, 
So you'll notice that this is my private browsing mode and it says Safari will not remember the pages, the search history, or your autofill. When you're back on your main screen, another thing that you can do is, let's say I have an article open from CNN. So I've chosen to open this article titled Frozen, the Broadway Musical Slated for 2018. Now notice right away, if I want to read this article, I have breaking news, I have a video, I have terms and service, I have pop-ups, I have a sidebar, I have social media, I have a lot of things happening. And if I have students that are going to struggle to focus, I'm going to have trouble keeping them on task and they're going to start to maybe click links or accidentally click links. So you'll notice in the URL where, where there are four lines on the left, if you choose that, it will take the article into reader view. When it is in reader view, you do not have access to any of the links. You do not have access to any of the videos. You do not have any of the advertisements. It is simply just the text of the article. I can choose the A on the side and change the font. I can change the size of the text. I can change the color of the text. So it's a really nice way to isolate the article and allow the students to interact with it without everything else that's around it. And then just with any of your other apps, if you want to close Safari completely, you can by double clicking the home button or by using your four finger swipe up gesture and you can close the app. Thank you for watching this video. Please explore other modules on the WCPS professional learning site.